April 8th, this 27-year-old clerk at this Payless shoe source in Indianapolis becomes victim one. The store's manager was unable to reach the clerk on the phone, so he called Lucretia Gullett and asked her to investigate. I was almost getting off work, and he had been calling um, the shoe store for quite a while, and no one was answering the phone. I had walked to the, walked to the door, and I opened it up, and I noticed immediately to the left, the cash register was open. So I called the police immediately. When I didn't see anybody, I didn't see uh, the woman that works there, I immediately called the police. You have all of this movement around, all of this traffic, uh, people coming and going, and unless somebody really stood out to somebody as uh, behaving oddly or looking oddly or whatever, you could come and go with uh, relative anonymity and nobody would really pay attention. Once I called the police, I went to the back of the store and there was a woman and a child uh, looking at shoes at, at the back of the store and I, I asked them if they would leave. Something wasn't right. When I went to the back of the store, there was a door right there to the left, and it was closed. I didn't go in there, didn't want to go in there. I just went back to the front. And uh, the three of them went back, and they went into the room, and I noticed they were looking around. Then one cop looked, I noticed he looked down to the right on the floor, and he, it, you know, he was shocked at what he saw. I don't think there's been too many days gone by that I haven't given some thought to this. And uh, I mean, obviously, it's, um, it's something that uh, I'm still hopeful that we will resolve this in, in some way. You know, you, you become a part of this, and I think that that helps uh, keep the fire alive. As a lead detective on a case, you have ownership of that case. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, goes with you and you're thinking about every way possible, especially one that's unsolved, especially the longer it goes on. W what did I miss? What could I have done? What can I do to be able to push that case forward and uh, get justice for the victim and their families? Uh, I always call her on the on the anniversary and just remind her that I haven't forgotten. That it's been an emotional roller coaster, and her her and I have had times where it's like I'm not calling you because I got good news. I'm just calling to tell tell you, hey, I'm still plugging away. I'm still trying. Hitchhiking was kind of the original thought. Um, I can't disregard that, you know, at this time as well, but I've also wondered about having a vehicle. Certainly, he could park a distance away. I think you could easily park a vehicle on one of these residential side streets and uh, nobody would really pay much attention to you unless you were there for some prolonged period of time or acting uh, strangely at the time. never think you see horrible things on the news all the time and although your heart goes out and you have you might have an emotional response deep down you, you have this sense that that'll never happen to me 
and uh, none of us are impervious to that. And it did happen. You, it just shock and awe. You do, it's hard to you know. It's hard to comprehend. It's hard to process that this actually happened. This heinous crime actually happened to the person I love more than anyone on the face of the earth. The victims have been identified as 32-year-old store owner Patricia Majors and her 23-year-old assistant Patricia Smith. Police say the women were staying open late for a customer when they were murdered. When you say horrible, that's, that's an understatement. It was the most devastating, tragic, senseless thing I've ever gone through in my life. We had a panic button on the desk, but I imagine it just happened so quick, the shock and surprise overcome both of them. There wasn't a person that came in the store that didn't love her to death. Uh, she was outgoing. She, uh, this was her dream. She had worked several other places in Wichita uh, prior to owning this wedding store, and uh, this was her dream. Uh, when the perpetrator came in, they believed it was somebody from a wedding party that had come after a cummerbund. Uh, obviously, it was not that person. That, that person showed up later and was the eyewitness here. Two women who apparently were the last customers in the formal wear shop. They believe the murder suspect was in the store with them right around the six o'clock closing time. He went until we, we left. left. Cause it was in between the time we left and the time the customer came. And he waited till we left. Cause we didn't have any money. He had planned on robbing them. He waited till we left. I don't think he, I don't think he anticipated uh, there to be, you know, a second person because by, by all estimations, that second person was probably in the back area kind of cleaning up the store because it was already closed. And so uh, if someone was looking from the outside, they, they probably would have already only seen one person. He'd just come into the door and as the perpetrator was coming out of the office area where he killed the two girls and uh, immediately sensed that the guy had a gun and something was, was wrong and started talking to the guy to say, hey, I, I, I don't want anything to do with this, just let me go. I'm, and he talked his way back out the door and just backed out the door. I think he was just trying to convince the witness to come back there and if, if the witness hadn't, you know, uh, uh, just kind of had a had a sense that that was not a good thing to do. Uh, I, I think I, I, there'd have been no reason to let him live. Motivation for him to travel that may be maybe beyond the murders. You know, I don't think he's I don't think he got in a car in Indianapolis and decided I'm going to go to Wichita and kill two people. You know, I've, I've made that drive, and I don't, I, I don't see somebody just wandering between here and Indianapolis. you got to want to get here. It's, it's a long drive. I mean, how can someone just walk in and shoot two women for no reason? What, what are you so bitter in life that you have to take your frustrations out on two innocent people? It took a young lady who had three goals in life, to be a wife, which she was, to be a nurse, which she was starting to do, going to school, and to be a mom, and she hadn't gotten there yet. I've never remarried. A big part of my life anymore is serving others, and it gives me a purpose and uh, helps with the loneliness and the self-pity I deal with. Uh, I won't lie about that. You know, we, 
being some selfish and self-centered, I want her back. And I know that will never happen. in Terre Haute, Indiana, this man, clerk at a ceramic store, becomes victim four. He stepped up on the curb. I looked at him and he looked at me. Maybe two or three minutes later, I hear pop, grabbed my 38 and I had it behind my back. I think his quirk is that he got off on the fact that people were basically right there and he was doing something that heinous and getting away with it. She looked up at me like her whole world had ended and said, they shot him in the back of the head. It's bothered me for years. I mean, I feel like I didn't act fast enough. If I'd have not waited so long, and that they might have caught him. <laughs>